Good evening, YouTube Tired Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. In this one, we're playing a little bit of catch up here. I meant to do a tropical outlook last week, but severe weather was absolutely insane. And we've gotten some insane live streams lately. Hopefully, you guys go back and watch some of those. But, anyways, here we had Brett and Cindy over here recently. Very active uh, June here, one of the most active months that I could remember. Because typically we may on average see one storm every two years in June in the Atlantic. So to uh, see three of them was uh, quite a spectacle. But thankfully none of these were an impact to, of uh, any uh, consequence, no real impacts to land. So good news there. But nonetheless though, definitely something to remember here. I think this is actually some of Cindy's remnants right here that has a 20% chance of development within the next seven days. While I don't necessarily want to say write this storm off, I almost would because there's going to be a lot of wind shear further up to the north here and also much cooler water temperatures. Far, than, far less than ideal conditions for uh, tropical development. So it's going to be interesting to see how things develop with this. but. I really don't think it'll develop at all. If we look at it right now on this little image of satellite here from 8 o'clock, it doesn't look very healthy. It's very lopsided. Doesn't look like there's going to be a big area of spin here, but nonetheless, something to keep an eye on. Real action really seems to be more so towards the eastern Pacific right now. Typically, their hurricane season starts earlier, but we've been off to a slow start. However, we have gotten going here. We are now looking at Hurricane Adrian. This is the first named storm across the Eastern Pacific. Their hurricane season actually starts on May 15th. But up until now, we've been pretty quiet. But Adrian is strengthened to an 80 mile per hour hurricane and is expected to, for the most part, stay out at sea. We're gonna get into the details of that in just a minute. But right behind Adrian, we have another system that's right behind it that has an 80% chance of development within the next 48 hours. The next name storm in or the next name in line for uh, the Pacific's list of names would be Beatrice here. So we're going to take a look at Beatrice at uh, what's soon to be Beatrice and what Adrian will be doing as well as what we could see over the Atlantic and the Pacific here. So we're going to change our graphic really quickly. We're going to start out by looking at Adrian here. Adrian is an 80 mile per hour storm, could be making a close approach to category two status it's at 90. Category two starts at about 100 miles an hour. But overall, when we look at the track here, like I said, it's going to be a fish storm. Nothing really indicates it heading back towards land. So there's some good news to be had there. And then this is what Adrian looks like on satellite. Very healthy storm here. Very good eye. That's a very well pronounced eye that's developed here. The uh, western side of it's still a little bit unimpressive, but it is growing. Maybe at its peak, we'll see a really cool image on satellite here. And actually, if you look behind this, you can see the uh, tropical the uh, other tropical wave here that's going to probably soon end up becoming Beatrice in the next little bit here. I think it could happen as fast as the next 24 hours because it's actually looking very well organized at this point already. It's not a full on hurricane, so we can't compare these two, but you can already see the counterclockwise spin here. You can already see that there is a little bit of an eye trying to develop here, so it is on its way. So when we look at the path for Adrian, like I said, it's going to go out to sea pretty much. It's going to end up being a hurricane at least until Friday afternoon, and then by Saturday it's going to go on a major weakening trend here before becoming extra tropical by Sunday, and then Monday this may very well dissipate. So nothing really of note there to be worried about with Adrian here. This, however, this uh, tropical system, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that here. 
So like I said, 80% chance of development here. And this isn't really showing me too much after that. But we will have to watch this because it makes a close approach to the uh, West Mexican uh, coast here. And could even affect the Baja depending on how far it tracks here. It's obviously not going to follow in the same track as Adrian. These storms are, there's going to be, there isn't really going to be any sort of a Fujiwara's uh, <laughs> Fujiwara effect or Fujihara. I'm trying to get that. I can't get that word out. Fujihara effect. Dang it. Fujihara effect here. If anything, I think with this being such a weaker storm, it's just going to get pushed away from Adrian. Hence why I think it's going in the direction that it is. Nonetheless, though, great attention will have to be paid to this as we go on the next through the next week here. I do think this has a higher chance of impacting land. If we look at some of the spaghetti models, which is what I was trying to look at here, we do have a couple of uh, spaghetti models indicating a potential for a, even a landfall here. Either way, this is going to make a close pass, so this is going to raise the, uh, the wave heights here across West Mexico. Rip currents are also likely properly imminent and then also across the Baja we need to be looking for this because it does make a close pass over there as well so let's go ahead and quickly take a look out here towards the Pacific right now here's Adrian and then here's our other tropical system we're looking at the vorticity map by the way and what we're seeing here is Adrian moves off and then what is likely to be Beatrice starts to develop around this point here but by the time we get towards the 2nd of July it starts to weaken as well may get kicked out to see this is based off of the uh, European ensemble here and then we may have to watch for additional tropical waves to develop here as we go through the next 360 hours here then as we look towards the uh, GFS ensemble here or GEFS it's a pretty similar deal. Just trying to make sure I get the time frame in for you guys. But pretty similar deal. Although one thing to note is the GFS ensemble actually has a little bit closer to land here. And then after that, it's pretty much a similar outcome as far as the rest of the uh, time frame here. Multiple tropical waves seem to be possible here. And any one of these could have a chance for development. So we're going to have to keep an extra close eye on that. We're in an environment where wind shear doesn't seem to be too much of a problem over this region. As far as what I can see here. I'm going to rewind back just a little bit here. Yeah, wind shear is not super strong starting out. It's really later down the line here. Where we might have to be keeping an eye on things. There is some wind shear that begins to develop as we go further down the line here. But just as quickly as it starts to develop, it weakens. So, like I said, I think we're in a pretty good environment for uh, tropical development here. The waters closer to the coast seem to be warmer more so than the further out towards the uh, eastern Pacific here. And then if we make that same comparison here on the uh, EPS, we're probably going to see a similar deal here. Uh oh, I think we went to the wrong spot here, actually. So we got warped over to the Atlantic again, which shouldn't have happened, and I apologize for that. But anyway, we're back to the Pacific here. It's a pretty similar deal. Both models are in pretty good agreement here. Both ensembles, I should say. So over the long term here, again, the uh, wind shear looks like it kind of weakens a bit. And we're seeing an increasing amount of uh, high pressure centers as we head down the line here. We will have to watch those because those can sometimes be a key indicator on which way the storm could be steered. If steered in a clockwise manner, we may have to watch for potential land interactions down the line should any storm form in the proper spot. These also can bring a lot of wind shear in or out of play. So 
definitely going to be important to figure out where those low and high pressure centers end up setting up here. So now let's go back to the Atlantic. We already know our situation with our storms right now. For the most part, I think the U.S. is okay at the moment. We will be probably seeing more and more um, storm systems heading off the West African coast here. I do think the environment is slightly unfavorable. However, that doesn't mean we still can't get another named storm. But definitely something we need to keep an eye on here. Let's go ahead and look at the GFS ensemble. It's going to be a pretty similar deal here. For the most part, there's going to be a bunch of tropical waves at the moment that we'll be watching off the West African coast. From that point onward, it's just a matter of will we have the proper sea surface temperatures and wind shear. So this is as far out as we can go with that. And of these little yellow dots here is potentially a uh, storm system coming off West Africa and something that needs to be watched very closely. So now that we've seen that, let's go ahead and look at the wind shear over this region here. As far as wind shear is concerned, still pretty intense over a large portion of this area. I'm trying to make sure I keep the time frame in here as I'm moving this along. This is towards the start of July. We do have some decent wind shear in this area here. So it's going to probably hinder a lot of development. This is typically what we would expect as we head from June into July. But then this wind shear does start to shift a little bit. So it leaves a small corridor for storms to develop. But do they get, do they get very close to land? I don't think so. The way the winds are moving and the strength of the wind shear is going to be a huge problem here. I think by the time they get towards this region here, the wind's going to uh, shear the tops of these storms off. Thus, we won't get a lot of development out of it. So now that we've looked at that, let's go ahead and make the comparison on the um, Euro Ensemble here. It's a pretty similar deal. It's going to be a pretty similar deal at this point. We've been seeing a lot of agreement between these two models. So it leaves a good bit of reassurance here, thankfully. But basically, pretty similar deal. Wind shear sets up an almost an exact replica of the GFS ensemble. So confidence is high that for the most part, we could get a couple of name storms in July or to start out the month maybe at best. But for the most part here, I don't think there's any threat to land, at least not at the moment. All right, now let's look a little bit closer to home. This is typically where we would expect more development, but right now the way the wind shear is definitely looks unfavorable starting out the month of July and really at the end of this month as well. So down the line here, I do notice something a bit more interesting. The gulf kind of uh, clears up on the wind shear here just a little bit, so that could lead to an area of interest as we head towards the middle of the month maybe depends on what seems depends on what is uh, able to fire here again usually during this time of year we have to watch any sort of uh, frontal boundaries that form towards the south here because on the fringes of these if they get into the Gulf waters which are also very warm right now you could get a little quick spin up or flare up of uh, tropical activity here make the comparison to the uh, European ensemble here, it's pretty similar at this point. I'll have to rewind really quickly. But yeah, they're, these two are in pretty good agreement at this point that we will see uh, a bit of weakening going on with the wind shear here. It's not going to be quite as strong, right? It's quite as robust. The Euro does seem to take a little bit longer for it to clear out, but by the time we get towards the middle of the month it's pretty much the same thing definitely something worth keeping an eye on here that being said with one last thing I want to look at here with either model and mainly that's going to be looking towards any probability of low pressure forming we look for these little red numbers that will form up in here and a slight change in color if we see the change in color go from blue to green orange or yellow 
the probability of tropical development could increase. So it doesn't look like there's a super high chance starting out, but later down the line you do see a couple of small areas of development. There's only one number in each of these though, so there's not a lot of confidence. So really I'm not concerned about any major development within this uh, time span here. And as we know, GFS Ensemble is pretty much going to be on board with the Euro here, thankfully. Or is it? GFS Ensemble actually is a little bit more aggressive with this here. I thought I saw an inkling of that just now. Yeah, you, the uh, GFS looks a little bit different here. That's interesting. We'll see which one of these uh, two ensembles wins out, but this could be a big deal even more so towards the uh, Yucatan Peninsula and then this could even hold out toward if this were to come together this could even become a thing for the uh, Gulf Coast states here so far it looks like the confidence would be towards if anything at all it would be more so towards Texas that's interesting so some stuff to keep note of here but for the most part, as of right now, I wouldn't say there's an immediate threat to any sort of land masses over towards the Atlantic. We will have to watch the West Mexican coast towards the Pacific with a potential Beatrice on the way. That being said here, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button, smash that subscribe button. Also, make sure you ring the bell. And then also share this video too to anyone that might be interested. But anyway, I'm going to call it a night here. This has been Tire Metal at Weatherman. I'll see you guys in the next video, probably in the morning. Till then, you guys take care. Have a good night.